and it looks like we are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to be with family on a Wednesday night. Thanks so much to everybody that helped out with the food. Just a blessing to have people that'll that'll lay their hands to to things. That ministry of helps is important. So if you're looking, if you're thinking I'm bored in my life and I got nothing to do, we got a place for you. <laughs> and I, I should mention Renovate Youth Camp, uh, I'm a whosoever is a good place for that. So if you've got some volunteer time, June 30th through July the 3rd, um, get with Samantha or I bet you could see Brother Ty and he sends you the right direction. Uh, we've got lots of room for, uh, for sowing some time there. Um, that big carnival, we haven't got the date yet, but there's a big thing coming up. Uh, that's going to be a combination of my tribe and uh, renovate as a fundraiser. So, and I just still love it when I read. Anytime I read bounce houses and Heartland's involved, now I know what's what that means. <laughs> I do I do? Um, Koinonia coming up the 14th. Okay, it's going to be here uh, at Heartland. So be ready for that. So before we enter in, we like to. You know, we don't, we don't collect a tithe or seed. We, we offer an opportunity for you to sow. Okay? So just, just know that. Let's go on over the definition of sowed, sown, sowing. Some interesting things here. To plant seed for growth, especially by scattering. Or to set something in motion. I like that. When we present the tithe, we're setting something in motion. Or to begin an enterprise. Man, I'm looking forward to beginning an enterprise. How about you? The word says, Proverbs 11, 24, and 25, give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. How many of you know that millionaires and billionaires, even though we may not see it, they may not be sowing into a church, so many of them use giving as a tax deduction, and it can't help but work. That physical act on a spiritual level still works. Even for, even for the unsaved who has no idea what he's missing out on, when they're, well, I gotta, I gotta give away. The, I, I can't, I can't tell you how important that is in a tax season. Towards the end of the year, you'll start seeing stuff where, hey, my tax attorney says this. If I, I need to get rid of it, I need to put this much money, and uh, that way it benefits my taxes. They don't have a clue. Imagine what they would, what would happen is if, if they were doing that through the year at a home church. Man, they. I tell you, I need to get Bill Gates in a pew here and we'll, we'll sow some. Elon Musk, absolutely. Yeah, Elon Musk who loses 150, no, $98 billion in a day and he's still worth almost $200 billion. I tell you, the principle works. Seed time and harvest no matter, no matter what you do. So just remember, you're a seed sower. He's put seed into our lives. This is a seed sowing church. So that means we're a church of time. And most excitingly, we're harvesters. We are harvesters, and it's good to be a harvester. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the truth. Lord, that the harvest is in the seed. No matter the size that we put with that seed, whether in our mind's eye it's a small seed or a big seed. Thank you, Father, that the harvest is in that. The blessing is in the tithe that belongs to you. It's not ours to, to negotiate over, Lord Father, and I thank you that we've got that. As a body, we have that. We have experiential knowledge in, in Heartland Church over the importance and the performance of the tithe in this body and in our lives. I'm grateful for that, Father. 
grateful for your word, grateful for the word that we have received, we are receiving, and we will receive. The word that we're about to receive, Lord Father, is seed that's going to be sown into us. And so we thank you, Father, for the honor and the privilege that it is to gather together to present your tithe, to present your holy portion, the very best, the first that we have to you, and to sow seed, Lord. What an honor. What an honor. We love you and we thank you for your son, Jesus, for the blood that he shed, the redemption that is ours. And we thank you, Father, for this day. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, it's always good to gather together midweek and get Pastor Jason stuttered up here to feed us some word. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Let's just worship the Lord just for a minute. You can stand or be seated, whatever is comfortable. Father, we just worship you right now and we just acknowledge the presence of God right now, Father. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like an eagle. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and they won't faint. speak with 
with inspiration by your grace and by a gift of God in them they're able to get on their level and we thank you for the anointing that will minister to us tonight and we'll feed on your word and I am believing and I believe that revelation will come that this will be real in our hearts as we begin to burst forth in Jesus name amen I sure thank you for being here tonight God bless all of you you may be seated tonight thank everybody God has us in a series whether you know that or not I know you do on uh, abiding in the word more than that the word abiding in us more than that seed time and harvest on all levels seed time and harvest is you know there's many things that can be a seed Uh, it's not just money, no. Mm -mm. It can be, it, seed can take on the shape of many things. But whatever shape your seed takes on, you just make sure to add life to it and by doing it with faith and love. There's times that Many years ago, they were receiving maybe a special offering for whatever to remodel something. And maybe me and Jody didn't have uh, money seed, but we had time seed and we had prayer seed. And we would sow our praying. Lord, we're setting aside 30 minutes right now to pray over that project. We sowed prayer as seed. Your Bible says in 2 Corinthians, talking to that church, it says that, he says your generosity and you having plenty right now is bringing much thanksgiving from the poor Christians at Jerusalem from your giving out of your plenty. You can't give what you don't have. And New Testament giving, now listen to me, keep this separated from faith seed sowing at times. You know what I'm saying by that. There's times we sowed seed when it was the last we had. That was a faith seed out of moved in here to do it. Sometimes it was moved, other times it was just, this is all we have and it don't come close to meeting no kind of need, so we're gonna use it as a seed, okay? But you have to just know, you have to discern what, what are you doing here? Are, are you alms giving? Are you tithing? Are you relief offering? Are you seed sowing? Are you mountain moving seed sowing? You have to discern and hear what you're doing. But he said, and, and they're giving thanks to God for your giving and they in return are praying for you. So they, were, they didn't have money to say thank you they prayed, the, the harvest was a prayer return. And really that's the best return you could ever get. That's the MVPs of the church. Whoever you are <laughs> is the, the praying people. Ooh. So prayer, your seed can take on many different forms. It can take on time, it can take on money, it can take on, it can, it can just take on your life. Lord, I give you me. That's all I have. And really, that's all he wants. All he ever wants is all of your heart. <laughs> so I'd like to just take, kick back up on this, on abiding in the word. We're calling it that, but really we're talking more about seed time and harvest. And I think it's interesting that April began uh, the bursting fourth season, April, May, June. And July, August, September will be rapid right? October, November, December will be a rushing fruitfulness. Uh, and right here in the beginning of this bursting forth time, the Lord has us on seed time and harvest. This is not coincidental. I know you know this, but I want to just remind you. This is not a church 
The other day I got a new iPad. It was time, uh, and we had to transfer everything. It, boy, it's come a long ways. At 27 minutes, it, it just airdropped everything. I was, I'd never been so impressed. Well, now listen to this. Just on the iPad, now this isn't counting years of writing messages on paper. There's 500, counting tonight, 547 messages on the iPad. I'm just saying that to say, this is not a church where I open up my documents and go, all right, that's what we're gonna preach tonight. No, we hold this before the Lord and we pray in the spirit until you know, you know. I love Bible studying, but Wednesday night, and Sunday morning, in my opinion, is not a Bible study. Sunday morning, we're addressing the, the family. Wednesday nights, we go, it seems that the anointing goes a little deeper. You got Bible thumping people there. You know, it's just a different anointing on Wednesday nights. It's gonna be more grounded, more teaching, a little more rigid structure, infrastructure, leadership. The Sunday morning, is it's gonna be more of that God's good, it's all gonna be okay. That I mean just gooey ooey pastor and stuff. Well, so here we are in the bursting forth beginning of this season and the Lord has us on seed time and harvest. So I'm just really expectant on what it is that he's doing. I wanna remind you, we said Sunday morning that the blue bonnets and the Indian paintbrush and the buttercups and all these beautiful flowers are out. And I told you Sunday morning that spring and springtime, according to Wikipedia, refers to a season of rebirth, rejuvenation, renewal, regrowth, and resurrection. So every year we see the proof of resurrection in lots of bar ditches with the wildflowers. Every year they come back. Every year they come back. Every, how do they keep coming back? Now listen to this, this blessed me. Texas blue bonnets are annual plants, meaning they go from seed to flower to seed in one year. Now listen to that principle right there. Seed to flower or full bloom they cast the seed in one year. Listen, they germinate in the fall. They grow throughout the winter. And they bloom usually around the end of March to mid-May. Listen, to this. it's so beautiful. They germinate in the fall. Just because you don't see the full bloom and the flower part, they're growing all winter long. Hallelujah. That's why we don't give up on each other. <laughs> or just mow over you. <laughs> ah, I got a blue bonnet inside of me. It ain't bloomed yet. But hang on. Now, <laughs> it's coming, yeah. So listen. They, bloom, they, they grow, they grow. This is the longest season. Listen, they germinate in the fall. But listen, they grow throughout the entire winter. And then they bloom. Now here's what a bloom is, listen. It is a flower cultivated for its beauty and it blooming means to mature into the achievement of one's potential. I mean it, and I, I believe this for the entire church. I've just felt it. Here in bursting forth season, if you will be sensitive, if you'll just live in the spirit, live in love, live by faith, walk by faith, guard the love walk, do what you know to do. If you don't have anything specific direction from the Spirit, just keep doing the last thing he told you to do and keep doing it with all your heart. I believe you will come into full bloom in this bursting forth season. 
What am I saying? I'm saying I believe you're gonna come to the achievement of your full potential. <laughs> and then listen, you'll go through a season where you're casting seed. Listen to this. It says that, and this really, boy, this, I could end up just going here. I've got seven messages put together on abiding in the word. This is part two. <laughs> so I feel like I've got a big shuffled deck of full cards and God is gonna somehow deal f five tonight. So I have to be real sensitive of what five he's wanting to pull from all this and just deal with what he wants to deal tonight. And that, that you, you, so I ble you, you believe with me, please. It says that that blue bonnet goes to full bloom and we enjoy it for a very short season. It's just a couple months that, that you get that, that blue bonnet. Then it starts drying up and getting wilty looking and it forms in that season, it forms what's called a seed pod. And it starts out green, but then it dries and it dries and it gets dry and it turns yellow. And it casts its seed so that it will resurrect next year, next season. I think it's really interesting that 1 Corinthians 15 says, that God has given each seed its own body. So what we call the blue bonnet is the body of the seed. Ugh, watch this. What we call the rose is the body of the rose seed. What we call the iris is the body of the seed. He calls the, the, the fruit, the pretty, the body. First Corinthians 15, the body. And God has given to each seed its own body. Now listen to this. So that blue bonnet, before it knows that it's its time, it forms a seed pod that will cast and be buried into the ground on its own. We ain't never gone out here and buried all them blue bonnet seeds that them blue bonnets cast. They do it. The seed knows what to do. The ground knows what to do with the seed. The blue bonnet knows to create a seed pod. The seed pod knows to dry up so that it can die and be into the ground. The ground receives it. The ground goes to work on it. The seed cooperates and yields to the ground. Are you with me? <laughs> the Bible says, speaking of a believer, when we leave this life, it says, the body that is sown, a funeral is a sowing service, literally. The body that is sown is not the body which shall be. We see each other, what we are seeing literally is the body, the full bloom of what was a seed. Think about this. We're all adults here, but this is life. I'm gonna say it professional as I know how, but don't have, we don't have to. When a husband and a wife marry and they consummate that marriage and that man casts his seed into her fertile bank, Think of this, there is well over 200 million sperma, the Greek word which we get our word sperm, which is really the word seed. God's word is his seed. God's DNA is in his sperma, his word. Your spirit gets impregnated with the life of God from his sperma, his word. How did Mary get pregnant? From the sperma of God, his word. A man casts his seed into his wife's 
fer fertile bed of well over almost 300 million seeds know what to do when they are expelled rapidly. They immediately, all, all, almost 300 million, know where to go. They ain't one of them little, little swimmers, if you will, calling out orders saying, follow me. It don't happen. They know where they're going. They know what to do. And that woman's body created by God is ovulating and certain parts of her female anatomy opens up at a certain season. Are you with me? Just, we're just talking about seed time and harvest and the miraculous of God and how the principle of it is just a law. Almost 300 million seed are headed for one destination in that woman. On the way, there's three to four different stages where most of them will die. They won't make it. There's only a few dozen that make it through every checkpoint where most of them die. One of them will make it all the way in and penetrate that egg. At that point, that egg creates something that begins to kill off all others. That one seed. Now listen to me. That kind of just puts a little bit of heft on how precious is human life. If you really understand the work that that one seed went through to get there and work at penetrating that egg and that egg receiving it. Just the handiwork of God. But that seed knows what to do. That egg knows what to do with that seed. Those blue bonnet seeds know what to do. And before it dies, it casts its seed, listen, so that it knows and is confident there's a coming resurrection. The Bible says when the believer dies, the body that we sow is not the body that shall be. It says the body we sow is, it's, in, it's corrupt, but the body that shall be is incorrupt and glorious. Now think about this. I'm just going to go right to here. I want to try to capitalize on some things. Genesis 1, uh, uh, I can read it to you if you want to. You're good listeners. It says, Genesis 1, 11 and 12 says, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed. Please say seed. And the fruit tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself. You get an apple, you pick the apple, you eat the apple, you take the seeds out, you eat the fruit, you plant the seeds. The ground knows what to do with the seeds, the seeds knows how to cooperate with the, the ground, you water it. If the earth is good, water's good, light's good, air's good, you're gonna have apples later. It's inevitable. It produces, you eat the apple, the fruit, you take the seeds, you sow. When we get what I call harvest day, I never call it payday, I've, I've always just called it harvest day. When we do our budget, it says harvest in the date. I take that, I know what bills are coming out. And then after that, and the first one is the tithe on the top. It's just one example, okay? Tithe, and then like tom tomorrow's will be health insurance, life insurance, car insurance, Harley insurance. You got to have Harley insurance. You don't have Harley. 
<laughs> dish, 92 bucks, and whatever. Then whatever's left after the tithe and those bills, here's the remaining left over. 20% of that I'm sowing into my savings account. Whatever's left out of that, because Rallo's seven years old, 7% of that, I have another account that I transfer it, it's Rallo's account. When he's eight, it'll be 8%. When he's nine, it'll be 9%. When he's 10, by the time he needs a car, I ought to be able to pay cash for a smooth ride for him. But I'm sowing that into that account. I'm just saying, here's the fruit, harvest fruit, okay. The best is God's, the 10%, that's God's. Now, like the Bible says, pay your bills. The Bible says that the generous man will be blessed and he will be good at his business. Both of those work together. Are you with me here? The spiritual and the natural. So here's harvest. The best goes to God's. The first, that's God's. I pay my bills. Now, I don't just eat all that's left over. Come on, church. I sow that to savings. I sow that into the, the future. So I'm simply saying you have a harvest. What part of it is seed and what part of it's bread? That's what I'm saying. Am I making any sense? Okay. Now, the seed is in itself. Now, God told us in Genesis 8, 22, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time <coughs> will never cease. Just like cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. <coughs> First Corinthians 6, Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. This is good, man, just, uh, just to hear it together. I planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. There's never any increase without planting and watering. Then he said, you are God's field. Jesus said the sower sows the word on God's field, which is hearts, didn't he? I want you to listen to this, the seven shalls right here. Can we pull this one, please, Andrew? Uh, uh, Luke 1, 31 to, I think, 35. King James would be fine. Really look at this. Look at the power of God sowing with words. Words are seeds, y'all. Words are seeds. You can sow corruption with words. You can sow life with words. You can sow death with words. You can sow hope with words. You can sow fear with words. Words are seed. Look at this. This, this will bless you. Luke 1, 31 to 35. Watch God work here through the angel. Watch here. Every time we say shall, please just... Count them on your hand. Ready? Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, shall be called the son of the highest, shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. Seven shalls right there. He just sowed the beginning to eternity reign of Jesus Christ right there. You shall conceive all the way to of his kingdom there shall never ever be no end. The entire alpha omega beginning and end first and last sown into that woman from Rama. Now watch how Mary responds. Then said Mary unto the angel, 
how shall this be? I don't know a man. In other words, I'm not married. I'm engaged, but I'm not married. And the angel said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power shall overshadow you. The holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. Five more shalls she responded with. And then she said, be it unto me according to your rhema. Are you with me, anybody? Isn't that good? <laughs> it shall, 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 shall. Now think about this. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. <laughs> Boy, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> Say, I shall have it. Come on, y'all, let's believe this. I shall have it. He said, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, this is what I want you to believe. When you're praying, believe this. Believe that you lumbano, take a hold of it. And you shall have, echo, you shall hold it. Are you here? Believe you take a hold of it and you will hold it. That sounds like believing and then listen, there's the bloom of it. And what do you do between believe you receive and have it? You praise him. You, you stay built up spiritually. You keep yourself built up. You, you pray, you, you read, you fellowship. Isn't that wonderful? Listen to this. Talking about seed, time, and harvest. First John 3 says, whoever has been born of God, if you're born again, would you just unashamedly acknowledge that? Whoever has been born of God does not practice sin. Listen, for God's seed remains in him. God's seed remains in him. How did you get born again according to the word? According to the word, by, you received by faith the word you heard and the Bible says you were born again by the word of God which lives and abides forever. Isn't that wonderful? And the Holy Spirit and the word of God working together, his seed remains in you. The NLT says his life remains in you. So one, one group of translators called it his seed, another called it his life. So we're, the, the life is in the seed. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it something that if you go buy a pack of blue bonnet seeds, in faith, you've got blue bonnets. Come on, am I right? Think about it. You go to Home Depot and you say, we're gonna plant whatever. Somebody tell me something, Let, let's, let's work with a garden. What are we gonna plant, Miss Cheryl? We're gonna plant elephant ears. Why? Because she said she wants elephant ears. All right. How am I gonna do that? It's gonna take faith, sure, unless you're a green thing. I'm gonna get some seeds. Am I right? Okay. Now listen, you go to Home Depot, you walking in like this. Why? Because as far as you see, you see elephant ears. You don't see seeds. You see, I got elephant ears. And you go in there and you get you, you look through and you go, oh, here they are. What you, ha what you have in your heart, if I get that, I got this. Come on now. And they sell them right here. Baby, we're going to have elephant ears. <laughs> we're going to the best ones. All right, I'm getting me some seeds. But I don't just see packs of seed. I see elephant ears. Whatsoever you believe when you pray, you got to see yourself healed before you get healed. Because healing is a spiritual thing and you receive healing with your spirit. 
You can't receive the spiritual by the natural. It's revelation on the inside of you of your redemption. Redemption's a spiritual thing. Are you listening to me? This, this book, this iPad, this is spiritual. <laughs> it's not natural. That book you hold is what I'm saying. It's spiritual. It's not natural. You're a spirit. Everything that comes from God who is a spirit is spiritual. God who is spirit spoke words which are spirit. The word is spirit and life. And God said let there be and the spirit side created and manifested for the natural. The natural always has to receive. Adam was a living soul. He was a soul made alive from the life of God in his spirit, made his soul alive, a living soul. That's what your Bible says. He died spiritually, he breached within. Jesus was not made a living soul. Your Bible says he was made a life-giving spirit. That's why he can give you life. Amen. Adam couldn't. Adam gave you natural seed. That seed bloomed. And that man cast his seed. Are you here? And that, we had a product called a human. And it grew up, came into full bloom. He cast his seed. But the flesh, the natural part, is always having to receive life. But life comes from your spirit. God is spirit. God's word is spirit. That's why it takes revelation and spiritual understanding to understand a spiritual word, not natural understanding. You can have full-blown, I've, I've, I've tried to talk to people that were way too smart to understand the Bible. <laughs> For real. Cook can't get out of their head. It's not logical. So that logic and that brain is robbing them. Because you don't receive the word with your mind. Your mind, the sower doesn't sow the word on your head. He sows it into the heart. The heart is where revelation happens, not the head. Most times when I'm praying, I have to consciously pull out of my head because the brain wants to work, try to hear what God's saying. You don't hear God with your head. You've never heard from God in your, not Rhema. You ain't never heard God talk to your head ever. He talks to your spirit. You get understanding, but the spirit of God, when he speaks, it's to your spirit. It's down here. It's in you. Woo, woo. And sometimes it can be so loud. About two times, I've looked around. I swore there was a voice, a loud voice in the room. That's when, boom, the Spirit of God speaks. Most of the times when people say the Spirit of God told me or the Lord said, it was their spirit picking up on the Spirit. But when the Holy Ghost talks, saints, it is far more authoritative. There's a, boom, a shaking on it. Boom, man, you know when the Spirit of God talks. So he speaks to your spirit. So these are spirit things we're talking about. So listen to this. Think about this. My child, pay attention to what I say. There's seeds. Listen carefully to my words. There's seeds. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate your heart. There's sight preparation right there. Think about the work you do with, we're gonna plant elephant ears. I promise you she's had that big man sitting by her. I don't care how big he is. That man, she's had him hold, getting a hoe and a rake, all kind of shovel, and it didn't matter her how big he was. I need that, that ground needs to be prepped for them elephant ears. Am I right? Sight preparation. That's what the word and the spirit does in our hearts during certain seasons. 
is it prepares the site so that he can plant new life in you. Behold, I will give you a new heart. I will take out, there's site preparation, take out the stony heart. Take out the stubborn and the rebellious area. Take out the canker worm. A lot of times people quote that scripture, God's gonna restore the years that the canker worm, palmer worm, that worm and the caterpillar. I'm gonna tell you what, I found out in my own life, sometimes them canker worms is just straight up self you. <laughs> Are you with me? And as you go through a season where the Lord and his word becomes seven dust and he, he's just dusting your inner man some and healing you, sight preparation. And then, boy, I tell you what, when you just stay yielded to it, as painful as that can be, he's not hurting you, but the process can be torturous. You stay with it. I was at my desk praying a while ago, and I said, Lord, I said, I'm so thankful to be on this side of all that. Man, when you're in it, your head, you just don't ever even know if you're gonna come out of it when it's been nine months, you know, daily. And then when you literally, because only you know you. No man knows the things of another man except the spirit of the man in him. You know you. You don't know every, all the condition of your heart and all that, but, but you know you. You know if you're doing better or not. That's what I'm saying. And I could honestly tell the Lord, I am better now than I was even 30 days ago. And I was better then than I was 30 days prior. But I said, Lord, it's almost like I feel a bubble around me for the last couple days. I don't know how to interpret that, but it's like there's just this shield. I felt it, because I know me. I know certain thoughts that try to get in my head. Do you know you? And when them ain't there, and you literally go, this is really peaceful. Are you with me, anybody? And so I encourage you, whether you're in growing season or blooming or forming the seed pod in an area, just stay with the word, stay with his spirit. Don't quit on it. Cast your seed out. I, I mean, speak the word. Speak the word. Even when you hear double-minded things coming out of your mouth in those hurting times, don't nobody want to admit it, but I've just, I, I, I told you, I, mm, I, I'm going I'm to tell it all. <laughs> I would hear double-minded. I would hear me saying things in those moments of such torturous pain, things I didn't even agree with or believe, but just senses talking, just roots talking. Then I'd ask God to forgive me. I'd ask Jody to forgive me. I'd forgive me. <laughs> so you stay with it. You, you just stay with it. And I tell you what, it's something when you get on the, the, the back side of it all and you look back and you go. It, it's almost like Paul said. He, he said, the devil's best blow is just a light affliction compared to what's on this side of it. Jesus was on the cross and it says, for the joy that was set out in front of him. You know what that joy was? He endured the cross because of the joy that was set way out there. It wasn't present. Nothing joy, joyous about Roman crucifixion. But because of, he had his mind on something, he had his mind on a harvest and he knew he was the seed. Huh? And except he the seed dies and falls into the ground. He died. They buried him. They tucked him in that tomb. And three days later, the seed bloomed in full bloom, like glorious bloom, <laughs> promising you that same outcome lest you go by the rapture. Isn't that wonderful? The Lord tarries. All of us will experience that, a sowing. 
friends and family will sow. And I look at it like that. I say it at funerals that I do. This is a, a sowing. We're not just burying the dead. Jesus said, let the dead bury their own dead. Now, you don't say that at a funeral. You get a fine, I promise on you. <laughs> but Jesus, the man come up to Jesus and said, let me go bury my, my relative. He said, let the dead bury their dead. Follow me. That's pretty hard. What's he saying? The spiritually dead. Let them bury their dead. So they'll sow that body. They'll cover it, plant it. It's a seed. There'll come a day that the voice and the shout of an archangel and the glorious trump of God will call and the dead will be raised. Incorruptible. Glorious. Isn't that something, y'all? I mean, that's the whole thing that separates Christianity from all other faiths is it's a resurrection faith. That's the, I'm, what I'm talking about is the really the whole reason we choose Jesus is a resurrection. Isn't that wonderful? Let me say just a couple more things. Oh my gosh, 735. I pray you're getting something out of this. I'm trying to just scatter some seed tonight. I'm not trying to line up on line nothing. Just, just, I'm just talking from my heart. I, it, I'm, I got, it feels this big, and I'm just dealing the deck a little bit, okay? And I thank you for your heart and just doing it with me here. I want to declare this scripture over you right along this line. First John 2, you are strong. God's seed abides in your hearts and you have won your battle with the evil one. <laughs> Isn't that good from the NLT? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? That's first John 2, 14 B, the last part of it. The, the other translation says, you are strong, the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. I like the way the NLT personalized it. They said, you are strong, the word or the seed of God lives in you and you have won your battle yes. with the evil one. <laughs> Hallelujah, say I'm a winner. So that's why Satan comes to take the word or the seed out of our heart is to get it out of our heart where it doesn't get in our mouth where we can't plant it. Can't sow it. The faith of God is in the seed of his word. The life is in the seed. Think about it. Even with, even with husband and wife, the life's in the seed. DNA. Isn't that something? In the seed. God's seed is literally in your spirit. It's in you to bloom. It's in you to bloom. Huh? Huh? Got to, got to bloom. What is that? It's the seed of God in you. That's the power of, if maybe you've, you, the first person that ever, ever preached the gospel to me, ever. Let me say this. I was raised in the United Pentecostal Church. Mom and dad divorced. Uh, uh, mom would take us to First Baptist Church. Uh, and they served food on Wednesday nights, and it was a huge blessing to to my mom and for us to be able to just eat a meal. I mean, uh, and I met you know some. I didn't have many friends. I just never had a lot of friends. Never. I guess, guess I, for whatever reason. Uh, and then I graduated high school, went to the Marine Corps, came back. Uh, went hunt, looking for Joe, found her. We started our relationship up. Uh, we were married, barely married, really, really in the first year or two in our marriage. And uh, on Fifth Street, we lived in a flat dump. Man, it was, it was horrible. But it was, it was ours. I wouldn't really call it home because we, we wasn't staying here long, see. <laughs> but it was, it was a place to lay our head for a few days till I could get up, get, get some more seed, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but 
one day DJ came over and he had his Bible and I mean he preached the gospel to me. He was flat on fire with it. Real evangelistic like. I mean he was burning with it. And it was contagious and I thought, golly what is this? Because I'd been raised in church all my life but I'd never felt what I felt. Now listen, I, I didn't say Lead me in the sinner's prayer. I didn't say that. He just visited, showed love, shared his heart. We, whatever, I'll forget whatever we talked about. Then he went on about his business. And I'm back to husband mode. Listen to me. He sowed eternal seed. That's what I'm, my whole reason in saying all that. That is incorruptible seed. It'll never die. That's why you can't get away from it. You can numb yourself from it a little while. But if that eternal seed, I'm talking about Jesus died for you and he loves you. That it, right there. It's been sown into your heart. Am I right? And you can't get away from it. It goes with you. Huh? When you go to do the, the nasty deal, that word's with you. It don't step out and say, I can't go in there. I'll be right out here when you get back. Mm -mm, no, it's, go, it's going in there with you. It's, it's in here. Am I right, somebody? Huh? When you're making provision to sin, that word's with you. <laughs> and aren't you thankful that it was, somebody? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some granny, some mama, some auntie, some preacher, somebody sowed the word of faith into you. I don't care if it was just one seed. The Bible says that one seed, if it eventually, if light conditions, water conditions, and ground condition gets right. You can have a seed sown in you 30, 40, 50 years ago that's just literally been lying dormant. And one day when destiny calls you, all of a sudden, he reminds you of things he's told you. That seed starts to crack open in you. It's incorruptible. The power of just one incorruptible seed sown in somebody. So don't give up on anybody that may still be acting and playing the fool, playing the harlot. That's Bible term that you sowed word into. Yes, sir. The seed knows what to do. Amen. And it's incorruptible and it's in them. Yes. And you know what, really, you don't have any idea unless you think about your old previous sinful life. There was times you laid your head on that pillow after a good sinning night that that seed tried to talk to you too, am I right? Yes. Thank God it did. Yes. So, this is why we don't judge. I judge fruit, and I, but I don't judge. See? Uh, there's times I've separated. It's like one man said, I, I can't change those around me, but I can change those around me. <laughs> I can, cannot change you, but I can change you being around me if I need to. But... I judge not. Listen to this. I'll start winding up. It's 742. This is why I don't judge. And when I do, even if it's subtle, I real quick to go to God and ask him, please release me from that. Because I've entered into the law of sowing and reaping. That's really the context of Luke 6, 36, 7, 38. Give, and it'll be given to you. That context is, and Bob has taught it this way also. Uh, I'm saying I agree with it. The context is be merciful. Show mercy and you'll receive mercy. Show compassion and you'll receive compassion. Give and it will be given to you. What? What am I giving? Mercy, compassion, non-judgmental, non-criticism. See, I leave the judgment to God are you here? Now, I'm not going to enter certain relationships. If you got stanky fruit, 
Come on, I'm not going to start a business plan with you if you, you, you got terrible <laughs> fruit of that. But I don't, I'm, not, I'm not laying the gavel down, so to say. There's not criticism in what I'm saying. That's God's business. We know that, but it's, it doesn't hurt us to remind. So you've won your battle with the evil one. Listen to this, if you would. You getting anything? We're just broad stroking the seed throwing tonight. Let, let's end with this. Let's look at Luke 17, 6 to 9, please, in the Big Joe in the house on the media. Break it down for us, Big Joe, would you please, my man? 17, 6 through 9. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Let's go New King James if we can, and we'll read it together. I want you to see this now. God's word is God's seed, correct? Watch this. Okay, back up one more verse, please. You did it right. I just, let, let's, go, let's get into this verse. Watch this. The apostles said to Jesus, increase, oh, this is a good portion of scripture right here, y'all. Increase our faith. Now, I want you to really stay open here, okay? There's, I'm not smart, but there's not many people that will teach this this way because the revelation of it hasn't come and that's okay, but I want you to see something. The apostles told Jesus, increase our faith. And Jesus said, if you have faith as a seed, you, you're empowered to say. All right. Increase our faith. We need more faith was their thing. Increase our faith. Give us more. He said, if you hold faith as a seed, you'll plant that faith seed by saying. That's what he's talking here. You'll plant your faith with words. And when you have faith, that's when you are empowered to say. There's a lot of talk without empowerment if you ain't got the word on it. Are you with me, somebody? And, and you want to just save energy and get in the word and get, whoop, till, till you know in here, whoa, oh, I got faith now, man, I'm ready. You don't want to just talk. Meditation is good. Muttering the word is good. That's mostly to keep your antenna clean and dry and keep you tuned in on the inside. But when you're talking about moving something, you need to go to the word and get, get the word of God on that matter. You know when you're stirred to the point of saying, then aim your faith in prayer and pull the trigger on it. If you have faith, as a seed, you will sow it by saying to this tree, be pulled up by the roots, be planted in the sea. Now watch this, and it would obey you. Now watch this, stay right here. If that's all he said, and there wasn't verse seven, eight, and nine added to this, we would say and be right in saying the it on the last line is the tree. Be pulled up by the roots, be planted in the sea, and it, the tree, would obey you. However, that's not what Jesus is saying. If you have faith as a seed, you will sow that seed, plant that seed with your words saying You'll say, be pulled up by the roots, be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. The it is your faith and the seed. If you have faith, come on now. You will sow that seed, that, sow that faith. Faith is the seed here. As a seed, you will say, and that seed will obey you. Now let's prove this next verse. Are we good? 
We're still in flow. This is just the next sentence. Which of you having a servant? Listen, faith is your servant. This is the whole message of what Jesus, Jesus went sonar on them right here. They're trying to move the mountain. He's saying, hold faith, sow your faith with, with the anointing on your words and that faith will obey you and it will move the mountain. You're not moving the mountain. Faith is moving the mountain. You're sowing the faith seed. It's in the faith to move the mountain. The mountain knows what to do when faith confronts it. So don't focus on moving the mountain, you focus on speaking faith. Are you with me, anybody? Which of you having a servant? He's still in context. Faith is your servant, watch. Which of you having a servant plowing? So your faith is what's doing the plowing. Your faith is what's plowing it out ahead of you. Or tending sheep will say to him, I'm just gonna, Add the little nuggets in here so we don't have to come back and explain it. Which of you having a servant, which is your faith, your servant, your faith is plowing, your, your faith is tending. Would you say to your servant, which is faith, when your faith tries to come in from the field, man, it's tired. Your faith tries to come in from the field. Would you say to your servant, which the revelation is that's your faith, come on in, sit down, sit down and eat. Next verse. Or would you rather say to him, your servant, which is your faith, hey, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself, servant, faith, and serve me. Your servant, faith, is to be strengthened and you don't come in. Don't let your faith come in till manifestation has happened is what he's saying. Your faith is sent out by your words to serve you, to move the mountain, to produce the manifestation, and when it's trying to come in because it's tired, you build it back up, build it back up, and send it back out because, listen, I have not eaten yet. In other words, manifestation has not happened yet. Don't allow your faith to come in and get tired and grow weary and sit down at the table because it hadn't happened for you yet. Strengthen it. Tell it, get back out there. Watch this. Until, until I have eaten, until manifestation, then, faith, you will eat and drink. Then you get in the word and you feed your faith. Now you're feeding your servant. Well, come on now. Now you're feeding and building up your faith so you can see, all that, yeah. Sow it again. Say it again. Seed it out again. That's when your faith comes in and sits at the table and eats and drinks is after it has produced. Come on, y'all. Oh, man, that's powerful. It's a life-changing thing. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful revelation. Uh, verse nine, please, I believe is the last portion of this. He, listen, the whole question was increase our faith. He said, you don't need an increase of faith. You just need to know how to send it out and keep it out instead of letting it come in and sit down at the table for just another grand disappointment. But it's not that faith didn't work. You let it come in and sit down at the table. Faith is made to be sent out and do work. It's serving, it's plowing the ground. I'm not plowing that ground. I'm, I'm plowing in prayer, but faith is what's spirit in the spirit, plowing that out ahead of me. When it tries to come in, you, you, you send it back out there until that manifestation happens and then you set faith down at the table and you build him up and you feed him. You feed your faith, you feed your faith so that at the next prompting of God, you sow your faith again by saying, as a mustard seed. What's interesting, when, when Jesus used mustard here, it's interesting, Charles Capps was a phenomenal teacher. I mean, a teacher of teachers of the word. He's been in heaven many years now, but, but he was also a extremely successful farmer. He said, many years ago, he said, the interesting thing about mustard seed is mustard seed is not a hybrid seed 
In other words, whatever it's sown with, it will not take on the identity of those other seeds. It will remain mustard no matter what you plant it with. Jesus said, if you have faith, like a seed that will not take on the identity, it'll remain the word of God in any and every setting. It won't, isn't this something? It'll remain life. I mean, housed up with all this mess at times, it remains victory. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? <laughs> My shortcomings ain't never watered it down and, and caused it to be 2% shortcoming, 98% life. No, it remains the word of life, the word of victory, the word of overcoming. Because it's not a hybrid seed. It will not take on the identity. Man, that's powerful. That's why you can be going to, you, that, listen, that's why as a believer you can say something. I'm just using that as an example. You can say something and that 100% seed life will go, that wasn't right. <laughs> why? It ain't hybrid. It ain't gonna take on that. <laughs> Are you with me, somebody? It'll talk to you. And I become it. It does not become me. I become it. There's transformation. But saints, you have the faith of God in you. You've been given the measure of it, Romans 12, 3, and you can send it out. Isn't that powerful? Mm. <laughs> That's just rich tonight, man. I can, I can taste it. It's so good. It's rich. Send your faith out at some point tonight. Send your faith out on something. I mean, just with a healing scripture, a redemption scripture, a financial scripture, whatever you're believing God for. Father, we thank you, and you just rattle off what's in your heart. Send your, I send my faith out now in the name of Jesus to plow that out in Jesus' name. Are you here, anybody? Ah, <laughs> oh, Lord, we're so grateful, and I give you praise. I thank you tonight that you have given to every believer the measure of faith and it is a God measure and a God kind of faith. And Father, we give you praise tonight. We thank you for the word of God that's a living and alive, breathing, inhaling and exhaling. And it lives on the inside of us, the word of life and the spirit of life in Christ. And just by faith right now, just because we know it to be true. I praise you right now that, Father, in this rich environment, we are healed in Jesus' name. We are the redeemed of the Lord. Like Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives, and because he lives, I live. Father, we give you praise that you have bought us, you have purchased us out of the sin slave market and you said you'd never put us up for sale again ever, never, never, ever. And I give you glory tonight just with a confident conviction, an argument on the inside of us that says I am healed in Jesus' name. I am healed, I am redeemed, I am free, I am liberated, I am emancipated. We give you praise and glory for it tonight. I thank you, Father, tonight for the strength that you've given every one of these precious people to do, do the job that you've assigned them to and, to and to make a harvest. Father, I thank you for your blessing on every tither, on every giving. Thank you for this wonderful body of people. We give our love to you give you us fresh again tonight. Thank you for the word of life and sowing your precious word into our hearts. Thank you for protecting us, keeping us sensitive, Lord. Guide us and lead us by the inward witness. Thank you for every family, every child, every family in this body, Lord. God's best for them. In Jesus' name, we believe this. We're convicted over it. We believe it. We believe we have it. Amen. God bless all of you tonight. Thank you for being here. Be safe on the road. Don't give the devil no place. We'll see you. <laughs>